The Parties, 1980, a series of 42 network time periods made available free by the CBC to the eight registered Canadian political parties. Tonight, two parties are represented. In five minutes, there will be a program by the Marxist-Leninists. Now, here's Bruce Arnold, national president of the Social Credit Party and candidate in the riding of Niagara Falls. Remember this $100 bill? During the election campaign of last spring, I offered this money to the first Canadian who could prove that there's any significant difference between the philosophies of the Liberal and the PC parties in Canada. I still have the $100 bill. There were no takers. No one in Canada knows of anything which makes the PCs significantly different from the Liberals. In our election campaign of a few months ago, we in the Social Credit Party tried to draw attention to two facts about Canadian politics. The first is that there is no difference between the Liberals and the Tories. They're both the same. And the second fact is that the leader of all three old line parties do not even believe their own campaign slogans. This proven by the refusal of all old line party leaders in general and the refusal of the Prime Minister and the leader of the new Democratic Party in particular to discuss their empty slogans in public with an English-speaking social creditor. During the last campaign, the leader of the NDP was scheduled to answer questions from an audience at the King Edward Hotel in Toronto. However, when it was discovered that there were people in the audience, and I was one of them, who wished to ask questions the socialist leader could not answer, the question period was canceled and he left the hotel. Mr. Broadbent and Mr. Clark refuse to even discuss details of a public debate on television unless they are sure that no social credit spokesman will be allowed to take part. I would welcome a debate with any of the three old line party leaders. If the old line party leaders really believe their own slogans, why are they afraid to discuss them in public with the only party in the House of Commons which disagrees? And since they obviously do not believe what they're saying, why should you and I believe them or pay any attention to them? The fact is, Canada is in serious trouble and the country's troubles cannot be solved by slogans. What could solve some of our problems would be the election of a government capable of handling the business of government in a businesslike way. A government dedicated to free enterprise and personal freedom, which knows how to live within its budget and provide services to people without running up huge debts. In short, the kind of government social credit provides in British Columbia and which only social credit could provide in Ottawa. The three old line parties offer the same solution to every major problem in Canada today. They're all the same. Take the problem in our economy, for example. Economics may be simply defined as the science of money. So a problem with our economics is a money problem. All three parties think they can solve the problem by increasing the price of money. The Prime Minister and the Liberal leader see an interest rate increase of about half a percent every six months as a magic solution to a problem they obviously don't understand. The NDP leader wants to peg interest rates at about 12%, so we pay that interest on everything every year. Only social credit wants to provide credit to society at rates that are reasonable. We seem to be the only party capable of understanding that governments, like people, cannot borrow their way out of debt. The three old line parties all think they can solve the problems caused by foreign ownership of our industry and our international trade imbalance by annually putting us deeper in hock to foreign financiers. Social Credit believes that every time a Canadian finance minister mortgages another chunk of Canada in New York or Bonn or Zurich, he's selling out another bit of Canadian self-reliance. If we need to inject money into the economy once in a while, what's wrong with Canadian money? Our government owns the Bank of Canada. Why doesn't the government use it? Could this annual sellout have anything to do with the huge donations the private bank owners make to the campaign funds of all three big parties during election campaigns? Canada's problems cannot be solved with campaign slogans. The serious issues facing our country cannot be solved in a short television talk. If you want to take a serious look at the solutions suggested by the social credit alternative, write to us for free literature. Write Social Credit, Wasaga Beach, Ontario. That's Social Credit, Post Office Box 345, Wasaga Beach, Ontario, L. 0L2P0. That was Bruce Arnold, national president of the Social Credit Party and candidate in the riding of Niagara Falls. Now on the party's 1980, another free time program, this one by the Marxist Leninist Party. Good evening. I'm Richard Daly, chief election agent of the Marxist Leninist Party. 
Our party shares with the workers and broad masses of the people of Canada their concern and anxiety about the deepening all-sided crisis, the chronic unemployment, job insecurity, a national nightmare which is one of the causes of mental and spiritual problems in Canada, inflation and the threat of war which the Canadian government's policy of lining up behind U.S. imperialists engenders. The crisis is behind the independence fraud of Levesque and the unity fraud of Clark, Trudeau and Broadbent. Workers and broad masses of the people are extremely concerned about these problems. The Marxist-Leninist party calls upon them to rally behind the only program to get Canada out of the crisis, the program to make the rich pay. Our party calls upon the people of our country to oppose all imperialist and social imperialist powers and condemn the Canadian government for siding with the U.S. imperialists. The Marxist-Leninist Party calls upon all the people of Canada to work for the free union of Quebec with the rest of the country, with the people of Quebec having the right to self-determination and secession if they so desire, and oppose all those who would keep Quebec forcibly in Canada. The Marxist-Leninist Party calls for the people of Quebec to say no in the referendum because René Lévesque does not work for the freedom and liberty of the Québécois, but rather for their enslavement. The Quebec people cannot trust him to negotiate on their behalf. Levesque is a representative of the foreign and native rich, not of the people, and so too is Claude Ryan. Besides the issues raised already, the Marxist-Leninist Party calls upon the people to support the restoration of the hereditary rights of the native people, both treaty and non-treaty, Indian and Inuit people, who must be given compensation for all the crimes committed against them by succeeding governments at various levels. The Marxist-Leninist Party fights for freedom and liberty against any kind of exploitation and calls on the people to fight all attacks of the state on the workers and oppressed people, to oppose racial and social discrimination and the fascistization of the state. The state is preparing special armed forces to suppress the people and this must be actively opposed through mass struggle. All genuinely democratic and progressive people must fight all encroachments on the liberty and, li and freedom of people and resolutely oppose all state-organized attacks. The Soviet social imperialist aggression against Afghanistan, which the vast majority of the people oppose and our party condemns resolutely, has further revealed the sinister imperialist sins of the Soviet Union, the USA, Chinese social imperialists, and the Canadian government. Carter announced on January 23rd that he would intervene in the Persian Gulf region militarily because this region is vital to the interests of US imperialism. Two days later, Joe Clark uttered the same refrain, which convincingly proved that the so-called opposition of the U.S. imperialists and the Canadian government to Soviet aggression against Afghanistan is not in the interests of the freedom and liberty of the people, but is rather in the interests of their imperialist aims of domination and hegemony over other countries. The Marxist-Leninist Party calls upon all the people of Canada to vigorously oppose the political parties which advocate war and are participating in war hysteria, be they liberals, conservatives, or NDPers and urges that no one fall prey to the fatalism and despair that the people can accomplish nothing. The road to true freedom and the only way the aggressors can be defeated is if the people of the countries which are the aggressors, the US, Soviet Union, China and others, rise up and overthrow their imperialist and social imperialist regimes. The peoples of these countries won't be clear in their mission if we, the people of Canada, line up behind one imperialist bloc led by the USA against the other bloc led by the Soviet social imperialists. We resolutely denounce all warmongering and the use of Canada by U.S. imperialists, and we resolutely denounce the use of the Canadian embassy in Iran to rescue and assist the CIA, whose hands are dripping with the blood of Iranians, Guatemalans, Chileans, Vietnamese, and other peoples of the world. Work for a world without imperialism and social imperialism, without war and Canada's participation in such a war. Vote Marxist-Leninist. Our party is organizing demonstrations from coast to coast against all imperialist and social imperialist powers on February 9th. Join with us to express the true sentiment of the people of Canada against imperialism and social imperialism and against war. ...program by the Marxist-Leninist Party of Canada. The Progressive Conservative Party can be seen in another of these programs, following the nature of things, next Wednesday night. The party's 1980 is a CBC free time election campaign series.